couple of quick things before I get started. Ken, we need a short meeting after services just for a couple minutes, and uh, it would be greatly appreciated. And uh, Brother Blake, that's a great thing that happened there. There's no doubt about that. One of his major concerns, though, is he can't be here all the time because of his mom. And he was hoping that nobody would uh, look down on him because of that and think he was just dodging not being here. But Alberta has a lot of health issues, and uh, sometimes she can't be left alone. And he, uh, he wanted to make sure everybody understood that, and that is a great thing for everyone. The ones that are sick, Brother Ed, who uh, did not sound very good on the phone when he called me this morning, and the struggles he's having with Lyme disease. It is a real and present danger around us. Several in this room has had it. And all the things the struggles goes with that. So hopefully we can find a better avenue to uh, work on that. But he is taking the medicine the doctor gave him. And uh, he is not very well this morning at all. So uh, please remember them and your prayers and all the others that are mentioned. And understand that we're dealing with something that uh, is very easy to get. Uh, Linda got a tick on her just working in the flower bed out in front of the house. And that's how she got hers. And Lydia's had it, and others have had it, and it's been uh, daunting, uh, Brother Eric. And it can be very trying. So please remember that. Take what precautions you can when you're out and about uh, to uh, protect yourself from that. This morning we're going to talk about uh, the Christian safety rules, and uh, I touched on this a little bit in an invitation a while back. Um, safety rules are one of them things that's come about since really 1970. There was a few companies that had them before that. Uh, there was a, a lot going on through the 60s, into the 70s, and workers' health and safety and all the things that are going on in our country. and. Uh, for a good reason. In the early years, if you passed away, you were just uh, drug off the job, basically, and they put somebody else in your position, and uh, that's the way it was, because something happened that shouldn't have happened, and you were no longer there. In 1970s, Congress and the Senate passed a law. The Occupational Safety and Health uh, Administration was appointed, and in uh, 1971, Richard Nixon signed that into law to protect the workers because of the problems going on. HMSA, the Mine Safety and Health Administration, was signed into law in 1977, seven years later. And why were these laws passed and put into existence was because of the things that were going on around about us in society. Uh, we were losing uh, workers. We were losing people at an alarming rate and it should not have been. It should not have taken until 1970 to try to figure that out, find that out, and pass some of the laws which we have today and all the things that we're talking about. In 1970, around 14,000 workers died on the job in the United States alone. In 2009, the number fell to 4340. And in 1970, 11 out of every 100 workers were injured to the point that they uh, had to take a period off of work and stay home for a while from their regular job. That's called a, uh, an OSHA recordable. In 2009, that fell from 11 workers being injured out of every 100. And understand that that's 11 out of every 100 workers being injured per year per company to 3.6 workers were being injured every year. So some great things have happened with that, and it's great that our country has put a lot of emphasis on that. And uh, when you go to the Mine Safety and Health Administration, which was established in 1977, in 2006 there were uh, 23, or excuse me, 73 fatalities. In 2020 there were 29. In 2006 the injury rate was 3.64 out of every 100. In 2020, it dropped down to 1.83. So there's been a vast improvements in those areas and a lot more emphasis on keeping your workers safe, not uninjured. And millions of dollars have been spent on training, certifications, record keeping, and making the workplace a safer place. There's no doubt about that. 
and millions of dollars are spent uh, and keeping these things where we need as a safer place is a great thing. Every year there's all kinds of specialized training that the different people have to take unless you work for yourself and still the, there are certain areas where you have to keep certifications up and different things and all the things that happen with that. So why would I spend all that time on that before I get into the lesson? If we spend millions upon millions of dollars a year on trying to protect our workers, whether it's OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or MSHA, the Mine Safety Health Administration, and all the things we put into that, and all the things we do to make sure that our workers are as safe as they possibly can be, where is our safety as a Christian? So many times when you talk about safety just in general to the general public and you mention about safety rules, they just think, well, that's not for me, that's for someone else, right? And even when you talk to those who are supposed to be trained, I remember sitting in a setting one time doing some training and uh, some of the workers spoke up and said, where'd you get that rule at? So I flipped over to the safety manual to the page where it was and showed him. So wow, I didn't even know that was in there. And that's the way it is in life. They, many people don't want to hear about safety. Many people don't want to hear about Christianity. So there is a parallel. There is a thing that we need to learn from safety and being Christians. The first thing is the safety manual made a statement that it is a responsibility to learn and know these rules at all times. That's one of the lines that's in most of your safety manuals. And you got to take the time to read them, to understand them, uh, to grasp a hold of the situation that's before you, and not do something that is against the rules that causes all kinds of problems and injury or fatality. And you need to spend time with that. And again, just like uh, workers who do not want to hear about safety and they want to take shortcuts and all the other things, Christianity is a lot the same way. People don't want to put time into it. They don't want to put effort into it. They don't want to do what they need to do to protect themselves uh, and the far more important thing than safety. Over in Exodus, the 31st chapter in verse 8, it says, When he had finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone written by the finger of God. So we had three periods of time in the Bible. The patriarchs were... God spoke to the fathers of the tribes, and now you have the Mosaical law where he gave them the written law. And the Ten, uh, the ten Commandments were written by the finger of God. They were given a law on what to do, how to do it, when to do it, where to do it, and they were to follow it. And it was written down for them. And uh, so they need, we need to understand the importance of knowing God's law keeping God's law, taking time, reading God's law, understanding the rules that are there for us. They weren't written for someone else, they were written for all of us, and we need to understand that. And will you be able to turn to the Bible? If somebody asks you a question, where did you get that from? Or was it something new? I've never heard that before. Um, and so many today do not even have a Bible in their house. Do you realize that? alarming number of people uh, will say tell you that they do not even have a Bible in their house. In Joshua 23 and 6, it says, Be very determined then to keep and to do uh, that is written in the book of the law of Moses so that you will not turn aside from it right or to the left. We need to understand that we have a responsibility to know these rules and to follow them and to see where God has put down the writing and how he has written to us to make sure that we understand them. And he took the time to put all that down for the mosaical law and the people uh, decided not to follow it. He's taken all the time to put down the New Testament for our living and how many of us follow that? And how many of us open the pages and know where it's at? And all the things that are going on. And it is your responsibility to learn these rules at all times and follow them. 
And we need to understand that. Proverbs 28 and 26. One who trusts in his own heart is a fool. But one who walks wisely will flee to safety. There's so many temptations in this world. We spent a lot of time in the last few months talking about resisting Satan and the things it takes to resist Satan to be able to withstand the things that he's going to throw at us. Without knowing God's law and what is written down for us to follow, we will not succeed. Jesus, when he was taken into the wilderness and tempted, he said every time that Satan tempted him, he said, it is written. And we need to understand that and flee to that safety, the place of safety where we need to be in our life as Christians. And if you're not a Christian, you need to open up the Bible and you need to read the Bible and you need to understand the Bible because that is what our eternal salvation is about and how we're going to get to where we're going to get to. And to understand that is very important. And, um, you know, and so many people in my lifetime have said, well, safety, that's just written to slow us down. We can get it done a lot faster if we do this and that. And, uh, and then, regrettably, um, you get to investigate the accidents afterwards in places where they had cut corners, had no desire to follow what was written, and, uh, and all that goes on after that. Psalms uh, 4 and verse 8, it says, In peace I will both lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, have me dwell in safety. We've got to look for the safe place to be. The safe place to be is in the Lord and putting your faith and trust and understanding in him and to be able to say, yes, Lord, here am I, send me. And the problem is we don't want to hear that. We don't want to take the time. We as Americans are getting lazy. We are getting to the point where we want everybody to give us the drive through religion and we want everybody to give us the canned products so we don't have to look for ourselves. We don't have to study. We don't have to do anything. We just have it right there and wow, there it is. I'm a New Testament Christian, right? We will continue learning until the day we die and it is our responsibility to learn and follow these rules at all times. And when we fall, there is a mechanism to fix that. And we need to understand that. Again, in safety training, many times an instructor would raise a safety manual and say, this was written in blood. He would hold that manual up to try to get everybody's attention in the class and say, this was written in blood. And sadly it was. Many people had been hurt, injured, killed, and different things that had happened in uh, uh, um, my lifetime alone and to be able to do that. Over in Luke 22 and 44, it says, And being in agony, he was praying very fervently, and his sweat became like uh, drops of blood falling down upon the ground. That is our Savior. He is the one that died for us. He is the one that put this into place. He said, If you love me, keep my commandments. And my commandments are not grievous. And on it goes, great drops of blood because of the fear he had for what he was going to have to go through, the great agony that he had of going to the cross for you and me. And in Matthew 16, 21, it says, From that time, Jesus began to point out to his disciples that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and to suffer many things from the elders, chief priests and scribes, and to be killed and to be raised on the third day. Written in blood. And we need to understand that, how great those drops of blood were for us. Over in Matthew 27 and 24, when Pilate saw that he was accomplishing nothing, but rather that a riot was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to, uh, see to that yourselves. And all the people said, His blood shall be upon us and our children, then he released Barabbas uh, for them, and after having Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Great drops of blood, written in blood. We have a Savior that was willing to come and to die for us, that we might have the opportunity to go to heaven. 
Although well, those safety rules that are written for workers are very important in understanding what the procedures are for doing what you're doing so you don't get hurt is very important. So is knowing what to do to be saved and how to get to heaven and uh, following those examples that are given in the Bible. And we need to understand that and put forth the effort to make sure that we're doing what God has asked us to do and how he's asked us to do it, that we might stand right before him. Remember in Mark 9 and 12, and he says, And he said to them, Isaiah does come first, and he restores all things. And yet how is it written that the Son of Man, that he is, will suffer many things and be treated with contempt? Our Savior, written in blood. In John 19, 34, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came forth. And understanding that this was uh, bought with blood, being a Christian, being called a disciple of Christ, and what the great price was for us that it was given. Let us understand that. Let us put forth the effort. Uh, not like some with a safety manual, and they give them a safety manual and they never look at it. And if somebody doesn't remind them constantly, they're just going to do things however they want to. And that's a way with religion in uh, this world that we live in. Although God has given us this book and has told us what to do and what we need to do and how we need to do it, many people do not pick it up. It is boring. They don't understand it. They don't want to understand it. They don't care. And we need to understand that this is the most important book in the world because as Brother Les has read, one day there will be a great white throne and we're all going to stand before it and we're going to give account of how we've lived this life. And all those safety rules that we wink at at the workplace until somebody gets hurt, there's a big investigation and there's blame enough to go around for everybody. The same will happen on that day. The books will be open. And another book will be open called the Book of Life. And if your name is not written there, you will not go into heaven, and neither will I. And we need to understand that as we are looking at about all of these things. The safety manual had a closing statement. If you violate these rules, you may be subject to discipline up to and including discharge. And about all safety manuals have that and talking to the lawyers, that has to be in there, and all the things that are going on. It is the employer's responsibility to try to see that you as workers are working safely, and we need to understand that. It is our responsibility as individuals to read and to know the manual that will get us to heaven and not lead us to damnation or condemnation, depending on which version you want to look at. And then that great white throne, it says, from whose presence the earth and heaven fled and no place was found for them. You see, that great day is coming. Both great and small will stand before that throne. And we need to understand that. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. Have you done what I've asked you to do? Have you followed the manual which I have given you? The big investigation is now. It's over, right? You won't be able to look back and say, no, this is somebody else's problem. They should have told me. It's somebody else's problem. They should have let me know that. And just as you see workers in the workplace who do not care about safety at all, and they go about doing things however they want, the way they want, until there is a big injury and there is a big investigation and everybody has to give an account, that's the same way with Christianity. Everything is loving, forgiveness, and all those things until we have to give an account. And we need to understand that, that we're all going to give an account of how we've lived this life. And we need to understand that. And no one will be exempt from that. And we will all be there. And we all be understanding that. And then it goes on to say, in verse 14, then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is a second death, the lake of fire. And just a reminder, anybody's name that was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. So how important is it? How important is a safety manual at work? 
Well, it's important when I want to use it for a crutch to get something I want sometimes, I've seen. It's important because it was written in blood. People were injured, people suffered, people hurt. And they had to write a rule to make that happen. We are sinners. We need to resist Satan. God has taken the time to write these rules down for us that we might have the opportunity to go to heaven. And we cannot take that lightly or for granted. And we need to understand that as we go through this and what we're doing. Remember in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3, while they were saying peace and safety, then suddenly destruction will come upon them like uh, labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. No one. So, if you love the people around you, if you love the people that are close to you, talk to them about the Bible. Talk to them about eternity. Talk to them about those things which are difficult to talk to uh, people about sometimes. And understand that. They were written for that. And over in 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse 7, it says, And to give relief to you who are afflicted, and to us as well, when the Lord Jesus will be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire, dealing out retribution to those who do not know God and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. These will pay the penalty of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Then he comes to be, when he comes to be glorified of his saints on that day, and to be marveled at among all who believed. To, for our testimony to you was believed. To this end, also we pray for you always that our God will count you worthy of your calling as a Christian and fulfill every desire of, for goodness and for the work of faith with power so that the name of the Lord Jesus will be glorified in you and you and him, according to the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me. So thinking about the safety manual and why it was written and all the workers have been injured over the years and all the pain and suffering that they went through, I want you to think about for just one minute <clears throat> all the pain and suffering that people have went through because they don't follow the Bible. All the hurts, all the broken homes, all the pain, the sorrow, and the destruction has happened from living their lives the way they want to and how they want to live them. All because they don't want to pick up the Bible, they don't want to read it, they don't want to follow it, they don't want to be accountable for their actions. And again, just as someone getting hurt at work and you have to investigate it, and there's all kinds of uh, reasons why that they got hurt other than they just didn't do what they were supposed to do. The same thing will happen on the Day of Judgment. You won't be able to blame someone else. The blame game's over. The Day of Reckoning has come. You have an opportunity today to make that right, to change that, and how important it really is to understand that and to understand what's going on. And we need to understand that Christianity is a action religion you have to do something you have to get out you have to spread the word go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and we need to understand that and if we think we're going to get there just by ourselves and not sharing that not knowing that not talking about that <clears throat> then we're going to have to uh, we have lots of problems and we'll have to be very careful with that as we go through this life because your children are important to you my children are important to me my spouse is important to me, your spouse or someone significant to you is important to you, and you need to understand that, and I need to understand that as we go through this in life and understand that becoming a Christian is the most important thing that you can do. You know, we had so much hubbub and such outcry in this country over workers being hurt, injured, and killed, rightfully so, that... We had the laws passed in 1970 and 77, signed into action later in 71 and then 77. Why? Why is there not an outcry for those who are dying and rotting and eternal damnation 
but there'll be no way to escape. Why is there not effort put forth to make that happen? Why is that not important to us? Why? Because it's like the safety manual that the worker never picks up and never read. God is a God of love. God will not condemn anyone to hell. God will not. God will not. But you need to understand God will do certain things. And we need to understand that and be ready for that when it comes. <clears throat> so all the petty arguments we have and all the <coughs> things that I think <clears throat> are right in my own eyes because I didn't want to pick the manual up and read it. <clears throat> well, in that day, vanish. For you that are not Christians, we are here this morning to offer you the opportunity to become Christians. The opportunity to escape <coughs> the struggles of this life. Resist Satan. Put him first in your life. And do those things which we need to do <clears throat> in order to uh, be acceptable to him and not anyone else. Over in Mark 4 and 20 it says, <clears throat> And those are the ones sown with seed on the good soil. And they will hear the word and accept it and be fruit for bear fruit some 30 some 60 some 100 times as much you see these are the ones that hear the word and accept it and also over in uh, john eight twenty four, it says therefore i said to you that you will uh, die in your sins for unless you believe that i am he you will die in your sins who are you going to be able to blame on the day of judgment? Me, right? That's one of them personal pronouns. That's me. And over in Luke 13 and 3, No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. This is a statement at the end. If you don't follow these rules, there's going to be, there could be corrective action up, including, up to and including discipline, uh, uh, discharge. If you don't repent, you will perish. And over in Matthew 10, 32, it says, Therefore, everyone who confesses me before people or before men, I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. How are you going to confess something that you don't know? How are you going to confess anything that you don't know? Just as the workers were astonished when I read the rules to them, and they swear, where did you get that at? You can't afford to have that happen on the day of judgment. Neither can I. And over in Mark 16, 16, it says, The one that, uh, who has believed and has been baptized will be saved. But the one who has not believed will be condemned or damned. The uh, King James Version has. We need to understand that this is a... Uh, Thing that has to happen in life. You have to submit to God. You have to be willing to be his subject. You have to be willing to swallow your pride and to say, I'm not doing things the right way. I need to start. I need to get rid of the sin which Satan has to resist Satan. I've got to get rid of the sin. I've got to put on Christianity. I've got to go in the right direction. I've got to look forward to going to heaven and all the other things. And again, in Acts 2.38, and Peter said to them, Repent, and each one of you be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for uh, the forgiveness of, of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit or ghost. See, that's the problem. We just want to go to heaven, right? So many times today, it is hard to believe. If you look up religious numbers, I'm going to give you this here. Before I have one closing paragraph. The atheist was almost non existent in 1800 as far as the world population goes. It was 0 .0 something in percentage. Today, there are hundreds of thousands of them. Today is when we got to understand that, right? It's got to be important to you. It's got to be something that you want to follow, something you want to change your life. 
something you want to make different. If anyone is here and has fallen away uh, from being a faithful Christian or just needs prayer for some situation in your life that is very daunting or very trying, please come forward when we get ready to sing this song here in a minute or raise your hand where you're at and you'll be assisted. The choice is yours. The manual's here. Whether you accept it or not is up to you. But please come as we stand and sing number 320.